So as we get started, let me show you some of the equipment that we can use to measure liquids in the lab. This is a, a medium-sized 200 mil beaker. Uh, we've got a number of different sizes available in the lab. Here's a smaller one, 100 milliliters. Uh, this is a graduated cylinder, uh, 50 milliliter capacity. This is a small disposable transfer pipette without marks, and this is a larger one, 3 mil capacity with uh, graduations on it. This is an adjustable micro pipette. And this is just a smaller one with a smaller capacity. And we have our scale or balance plus a weigh boat, the white tray. And our first measurement is for 15 milliliters. We could use a beaker like that, but notice the first marking is at 20. We could use a small graduated cylinder, but the maximum amount that we can put in that is 10 mils, so that won't work. Uh, we could use a large beaker, but again, the smallest markings on there are uh, 50 and 25. Here we have a larger graduated cylinder that does have a 15 mil marking, so let's use that. And we'll see how accurate our volumes are by measuring the mass. And hopefully uh, you already know that one milliliter should be uh, one gram of mass if we're dealing with just regular water. And whenever you're measuring uh, the volume in a graduated cylinder, you want to measure from the bottom of the meniscus, which is the curved surface of the liquid. And we want to zero our balance. So it says zero and accounts for the weight of the weigh boat. And again, we have 15 mils. It's a little blurry, so it's hard for you to see that, but it is at 15 mils. And we'll pour that in and see how much that weighs. And it looks like 14.67 grams. And you'll notice the numbers jump around a little bit just because the uh, scale is so sensitive that even the movement of my hands and arms will affect the uh, measurement there. Okay, we'll try this again. We'll do two more trials. Again, we'll zero things out. Try to get as close as we can to 15 mils. And it looks like we're at 14.12 grams. Okay, we'll dry the weigh boat out and zero everything again and do one more trial. And it looks like our third trial is 14.12, or 13. Let's go with 14.13. Okay, the next volume that we want to measure is 2 milliliters. And again, we have to decide what piece of equipment to use. Uh, we could use a graduated cylinder. Uh, this graduated cylinder is marked in tenths of a milliliter. We could also use the graduated uh, disposable transfer pipette. It's blurry so you can't really see the numbers on there but it is marked in half milliliter increments up to three milliliters. 
But let's go with the uh, graduated cylinder. I think that would be a better choice. Okay, our first trial looks like we have 2.11 uh, grams. And we'll try the weigh boat, zero it out. Let's try it again. It looks like we've got 2.00, or maybe 1.99. I'll let you decide which of those numbers you want to go with. Okay, we'll do it one more time. It's always good to keep the graduated cylinder or beaker or whatever you're using flat on the table and try to get your eye down to the level of the markings rather than holding it where it may not be sitting uh, very straight. Okay, it looks like we got 2.02 .02 grams for that one. All right, our next sample, we want uh, 0.5 or half of one milliliter. So again, what do we want to use for that? Well, we could continue using the small graduated cylinder. It does have tenths of a milliliter markings on it. Uh, but this time, let's try one of the pipettes. Now this pipette doesn't have graduations and it is a one mil uh, pipette. Maybe it would be better to use one that has the markings on it. And this one does have half milliliter markings up to three milliliters. So we'll see how we do on that. We've got our scale zeroed out. And it's hard to see the markings there, but that's at half of a milliliter. Although we end up with 0 0.28 grams, which means there's probably a bubble in that uh, pipette when we made that measurement. Let's see if we can do a better job on trial number two. Okay, that one's a little closer, 0 0.53. Yeah, we'll try one more time. And it looks like we got 0 0.45 grams for that one. All right, our next sample, we're trying to measure out exactly 500 microliters. Microliters are written with a symbol that looks like a U and an L, but that's actually a, uh, a mu, a Greek M, for micro. Now this is an adjustable micropipette. Uh, it's set for 500 microliters. So we'll see how accurate that is. Notice that we're using a blue tip that's for a larger uh, adjustable micropipette. We've got it set for 500 microliters. Hopefully you've already figured out what that is in milliliters. OK, 
Okay, it looks like we got 0 0.50 grams. I'll try that again. And 0 0.51 grams this time. And we'll do one more. Hopefully you've already read a little bit about how to use an adjustable micropipette. That was one of our lab skills in this lab exercise. You have to push the plunger down to the first stop to extract. Looks like we have 0.51 again for our third trial. Uh, but you push the plunger down to the first stop to extract your sample and suck it up. And then you push the plunger down to the second stop to expel the sample. It does take a little practice. All right, our last sample size is 50 microliters, very small amount. So we're going to switch to the small adjustable micropipette. And uh, you can't see it very well there, but it is set for 50 microliters. And notice we're using a different tip for this one, a uh, smaller yellow tip for smaller volumes. Okay, and it looks like we got 0 0.05 grams. Trial number two, looks like we also got 0 0.05 grams. And we'll try it one more time. And it looks like we have 0, 0.0, oh, it's bouncing around. We'll go with 0 0.05 one more time. Now that you've got your data, uh, and that's hopefully written into your lab manual in the data section, you can go ahead and do the analysis and answer the questions and turn that in.